Hey, hey, how are you doing? So today we're gonna be diving into a deep review of Glossier products. Despite the fact that you can't find them in Spain, I've actually tried a lot of their products. It was a brand that I was very interested in when it came out and um, I've had friends and family members send it over to me and then I got to go to one of their flagship stores. So I've actually gotten to try and use their products for quite a few years and then try and use products that I did not end up purchasing in their actual store as well. But now they've arrived at Sephora in the US and Canada, so I'm sure that a lot of you have questions about whether anything is still worth it in 2023 or most brands have caught up with them and I'll be talking about that and a lot more on today's video. But before we get into that, hi, welcome to my channel. I try to focus on whether something will add value to our life by making us feel more confident and more authentic in the way that we show up and present ourselves to the world here. Because otherwise, I don't think it's worth spending your money on. I think we're constantly barraged by absolutely stunning things that we all want to touch and grab and wear but I try to keep a focus on whether something will be actually useful to you and therefore worth spending your money on. So if that sounds good to you, then please keep on watching. And if you want to see more content like that, then please subscribe. So I'm just looking at their website over here. Apparently they were founded in 2014. I thought that they were older than that. And all of their products are set to be cruelty free. We love that. They also say that all of their products are dermatologist tested and formulated for all skin types. Though I'm not sure that all of them are fragrance free. So if you're sensitive to that, you're gonna have to kind of look into it. And just so you know a little bit of what the general aesthetic is like, they describe what beauty should be in their opinion, as fun, easy, imperfect, and personal. You know, kind of the, the clean aesthetic, but with a little bit of a, of a fun twist to it. So I think that the appeal of Glossier, especially at the time that they launched, was that beauty back then was very, you know, full glam, contoured, full on beaming highlight. And they came out at a time that was that that was very much against the grain. It was very much against what everybody was doing and it was a refreshing breath of fresh air. Since then, things have changed a lot. I feel like this kind of beauty, and I am wearing a full face right now, is very much what is the norm. So I do have thoughts about that. And I do think that while a lot of the products are good, a lot of other brands have kept innovating and surpassed them in some of the formulas. But we're going to start right at the beginning. I haven't tried a lot of their skincare. The only thing that I had on hand that was purely skincare was a sample of their priming moisturizer, which they described as a buildable hydrating cream. I can't speak as to, you know, it's life-changing effects, but I think that there's only so much that a moisturizer can do. In terms of the formula, it is quite a thin cream. It's not a very thick, occlusive cream, which in my opinion is ideal when you want to wear a, a moisturizer under makeup. I think that if you have anything that is too thick, it's kind of going to interfere with the makeup that you put on top of it. It feels quite lightweight and refreshing, almost gel-like when you put it on the skin. It's quite cooling, which is nice. So would I recommend it? I mean, if you're in the market for <laughs> very specifically a, a, a primer, it's not, it's not really a primer. It's a moisturizer that you can use under makeup. Um, you might like it. I feel like there might be cheaper options out there though. Now let's actually get into the stuff that I've had for a really, really long time and that I've really tested. The first of which is the Glossier Future Dew. Now this product is very interesting. It is described as an oil serum hybrid. And I think that that describes it very, very well, actually. Now on the website, it says that it's 30 milliliters or one fluid ounce. I do think that that would last you quite a good time. I don't think that you would ever need to use more than two pumps at a time. All that it says is that it has nourishing oils, give you a well moisturized look that lasts up to 12 hours and powerful plant-based extracts to make your skin look brighter instantly and over time. It doesn't say what extracts. It does mention that it's vegan, if that is important to you. I don't detect any kind of scent or fragrance in it, so I think it would be good for your sensitive skin. 
The texture of it is unlike anything I've felt before. It's quite runny and almost syrupy. It's both liquid and a little bit gloopy. It really feels like a skin oil that's been mixed with a serum and some pigment. This does have some kind of mica or pigment in it, just to be clear. It's not completely see-through. Now, when you work it into the skin, you will see that it pretty much all disappears and all that it leaves you with is this just incredible glassy shine, which is very, very stunning. Now, the way that I apply this kind of product is quite delicately. I work it into the skin in small areas and especially in the places that I have very dry, flaky skin, I am more delicate not to rub and instead pat in. If you have chronically dry skin like I do, I definitely recommend that you do that with anything that you put on your face. I do feel like the warmth of the hands really helps work it into the skin. And I have both worn it under and uh, without any makeup on top. This is not a product like the Charlotte Tilbury, what is it, highlighter that everybody uses or the e.l.f. glow. This truly is more of a skincare feeling serum and it doesn't leave a high beam shine. You can really wear it by itself. However, is this worth purchasing? Would I recommend this? Since this product came out, and this is kind of the issue with a lot of Glossier products, since this product came out, a lot of similar products have come out. One of them is the Make Beauty Moisturizing Reverse Emulsion. Something else that's similar is the Natasha Denona Skin Glass, something like that. I'm not saying that they're necessarily going to be cheaper, I'm saying that it's been done since then. Though I haven't tried those other two products, something that this product does have an issue with is that it does stay kind of a little greasy on your face. I mean, calling it greasy is like, uh, it's gonna put a picture in your head that's like very nasty almost. It's not that, it's, it, you, you have that, that skin oil feeling uh, lingering in your skin. Now for somebody like me with very, very dry skin, that's not an issue. I want my skin to stay as glowy as possible for as long as possible. If I don't have moisture in my skin, if something is sitting on it that makes it look like I'm moisturized, I'm 100% good with compromising on the tackiness of my skin so that I can look like I have healthy a healthy glow about me. But somebody that has normal to oily skin probably wouldn't like this product, even though it looks beautiful, because as the day goes on, your, your skin is just gonna get oilier and oilier with this sitting on top of it already. And if you put something like a skin tint on top of it, that's not going to help because that's not gonna mattify at all. So as you're gonna see as we go on through this, Glossier kinda has their hero products. They have one foundation, one concealer, one type of blush, one of everything pretty much. It's supposed to be that this one product is like, you know, the be all end all and all that they're going to do. A product that I don't currently have, but I have tried in store is their Perfecting Skin Tint. Their Perfecting Skin Tint is a product that is, it's the lightest possible skin tint that you can imagine. I mean, it has basically no pigment. It is so, so watery and runny and it does very, very little to your skin at all. If you're trying to perfect, even out your complexion, cover any kind of redness or acne scars, whatever kind of imperfection on, on your skin, it's not going to do anything for you. I do think that there's a use case for it. You know, for teenagers, if they're trying to get into makeup, it's something that's very, very hard to mess up. But otherwise, especially for $26, it is not worth it. Absolutely not. So instead, what I use is the MAC Studio Radiance, which I believe that they have rebranded and it's called Face and Body now. It is also a very, very sheer skin tint kind of product. I have mine in the shade C1. I don't think that their undertones are, are very good. I recommend you go into store if you're gonna try any of these. However, because it is a skin tint and it's very light, it's going to melt into your skin <laughs> very well and it doesn't matter too much if it's not your perfect color. As you can see, it's watery, but it kind of holds itself 
which means that it's not gonna just disappear when you put it on your skin. First of all, what this product does as opposed to the Glossier product is that it gives you some kind of coverage. But something that's very, very interesting about this product is that the more you work it into the skin, the more you work it between your fingers, the more you heat it up, the thicker that it gets and the more coverage that it offers. So it's a very versatile product actually because what ends up happening is like if you want something very, very light all over your face, you just kind of put it on, melt it in with your fingers. But otherwise, if you start massaging it between your fingertips, you will kind of feel it kind of start to resist almost, you feel a little bit of, of friction, it's gonna thicken up. It's like you're whisking it or something. It's, it's like it's turned almost into a concealer, obviously thinner, but you can use that to cover up spots on your face that are more pigmented or that are just not looking that great that day but without adding any extra product, right? The Glossier one, no matter how many layers you put on, there's no building that up. This one you can build up, but the good thing is you don't even need to because you can just put that thicker worked up layer on top of it. I really recommend this product and I much recommend it over the Glossier one. I think $26 for what is essentially water. <laughs> It's really, really not worth it. Next up is their stretch concealer. Oh my gosh, I love this product. <laughs> the only thing I don't like is the shade range. I wish that they had more shades. I wish that they had more undertones, but oh my goodness, I fucking love this concealer. This is a very stiff, emollient formula. I like to use it with my fingers. I think that a lot of Glossier products are designed to be really fun, and easy to apply, but I've also applied it with a brush before and it looks great. And I've also applied it with a sponge and have it look great. I would say that you have to pick it out of the tin or the pot rather with your hand, with your finger, because that warmth is really gonna help it melt into your skin. But other than that, to blend it out, anything will do. That is one thing though that like you can't you can't use it with with long nails because you're just gonna get everything uh, under your nail. I have mine in the shade G10, which against my skin you will see in the swatch it looks a little too warm. But actually, as I have a lot of under eye darkness, this shade really really cancels it out and just makes me look so much more awake. I mean, you can even see as I'm applying it, the comparison between the two eyes, especially in the inner corner where I have a lot of darkness. One eye is definitely brighter than the other. It just works really, really well, surprisingly well. It's surprising because with the warmth of your skin, it just kind of melts into your skin and looks really, really seamless. Now, this does not set down. This is a dewy formula. I love that. I really like the glossy under eye look. I think it looks very youthful, but this does mean that it can crease sometimes. I don't have a lot of under eye um, fine lines, but I am careful when I'm putting it over the top of my lid not to bring it down too low. I have hooded eyes and if I bring it down too low, it's gonna start to crease. I do know that you can powder it. I don't ever powder my face. I have not found a powder that works with my dry skin. I don't like how they look on me, but I do know that you can powder it and some people do like to do that. If you really want a skin product from Glossier, 100% go with the stretch concealer over the skin tint. I know that some people use the stretch concealer as just a foundation on their face. They just kind of stretch it all over. I mean, it's, it's in the name. You can really stretch it far. I don't like love this shade in the rest of my face. I was trying to hide a little bit of darkness and redness around my mouth and my nose, but unfortunately the shade is just a little bit too dark for me in those areas. So I, I might have to pick up a different shade at some point, but honestly, there's just, there's so much product in, in this little tub. It's 4.8 grams, which is... 0.17 ounces. It's just gonna last forever, honestly, because you pick up so little every time that you put your finger in it. And it's fragrance free, apparently. Next up is the Boy Brow. Boy Brow is the only eyebrow product that I have tried from them, and I have only ever tried it in a tinted version. I have not tried the clear one. I have mine in the shade Brown. And I mean, as you can see, just from putting on the color Brown, they're already quite 
pronounced eyebrows so if I put on an even darker color I'm scared to, <laughs> to, to find out what will happen. In general uh, I think that it's a good proud product. I can't speak on behalf of people that have less eyebrow than me. My problem is too much hair, not too little hair. I don't know how well it'll do to help somebody that doesn't have any hair, but I will say that it holds your hair quite well. I've had it on for quite a few hours now and you can see, especially at the top, it's still standing up. Something that I really like about it too is that it does not leave your brows feeling crunchy. And I feel like the best way to describe the kind of eyebrow look that you will get out of this is fluffy. It really, really makes your eyebrows look bushy and fluffy. Now I've applied it to the back of my hand here just to show you that uh, unless you hit uh, your skin with the very, very tip, off the applicator, it really is hard to get product onto your skin. It only grabs onto the hairs. And most of the time I have problems with, with getting product that is colored onto my skin when I apply it. This one didn't do that, which was interesting. So generally, I would recommend this eyebrow product. I know that there are stronger hold brow products out there. This is not the strongest hold. I've heard it be compared to the M Cosmetics uh, brow gel, but in general, it's a solid brow product and I would recommend it. Their star cheek product and probably the product that went the most viral was their cloud paints. They are liquid blushes that come in a little tube that kind of looks like a paint tube, which I think is very fun. I think this was one of the first liquid blushes to really explode on the market. It came in so many fun colors that it made it very, very attractive. I have four different colors, but I can only find three for this demonstration. <laughs> the three colors that I have on display here are Dusk, Beam, and Storm. Dusk is described as a brownish nude. I think it leans a little bit more orange than brownish nude. It's definitely a toasted nude, I would say. It is a very, very beautiful color. It's my most worn out of all of these, especially in fall. It just looks absolutely stunning. The second color that I have is Beam. Beam is described as a soft peach. I would not call it a soft peach. I would say it's a very bright peach. It's almost like a coral color, at least on me. I think that's good because it means that it's more likely to show up on darker skin tones, which I appreciate. And then finally, the last color that I have is Storm, which is described as a warm rose. And it's actually what I'm wearing today. Here I have them all up for comparison next to each other and then sheared out. In general, they have a lot of brighter and fun colors. They even have a deep fuchsia color, which uh, is quite bright pink and a bright poppy color, which is like a red, even like a bright orange. This formula is sheer, but definitely pigmented. And it's very easy to just kind of dab onto your skin and then just massage onto the cheek and build up as you want. I kind of just dot it on first and then go back and press it on with first a different finger than I have the product on and then both fingers that I've used to apply. You can see that it can either have quite a lot of impactful color or you can really sheer it out. And I'd say that the finish is kind of glowy, but it definitely sets down. Your skin does not feel tacky after you put it on. I always go in with a light hand when it comes to these products and build it up. They do not disrupt the product that's underneath them. They do not go on patchy. They just look stunning on the skin, honestly. Like any cream or liquid blush, you do kind of have to build it up more than you want because I do find that your skin kind of eats it up <laughs> as time passes. If you do buy this product, absolutely for the love of God, do not remove the foil that covers it at the tip. I think that the best thing that you can do is poke a little hole in it with a, a pin because otherwise way too much product comes out. So either you end up putting on way too much product or you end up wasting product. I'm so sorry, but then for the noise outside, by the way, I have construction right across from me.
It's a really beautiful formula. I mean, it looks stunning on the cheeks. It applies thinly, but it's buildable. It comes in beautiful colors. And I love how easy it is to apply. However, it is 2023 now. There are so, so many liquid blushes on the market. A lot of them cheaper, like the Daniel Sandler blushes that I've heard incredible things about. Would I recommend them? Yes, but this used to be very innovative in the market, but they're just not anymore. There's tons of gel formula blushes. You might be able to get something just as good somewhere else, or a color that you like more, or a different format, etc, etc. Now let's move on to lips. This is the Generation G lipstick. This is my favorite lipstick of all time. This is one of my favorite lip products. It is a very, very thin formula. I think the best way to describe this is a sheer matte lip balm. They look and feel absolutely weightless. I think they're an incredible formula that is not very common, at least in Western markets. They give you a blotted lip effect without having to blot your lips, essentially. It does have a buildable formula and you can definitely deepen the pigment on your lips. And it has a very, very beautiful finish where it's kind of a dimensional formula and depending... Hi. It's... It has a very beautiful dimensional quality where if you look at it from the side, it comes off a lot more pigmented than if you look at it straight on. It's almost like it does have a satin finish. As I grow older, my lips kind of have lost a little bit of their color and they're getting a little bit more blue and a little bit more discolored. Just putting on something that evens out their color and adds a little bit more life to your face just completely changes the way that you look. I always have one of these in my bag because it is my absolute favorite product to just throw on even when I'm not wearing any makeup because it just makes me look alive. It makes me look awake. I have two shades in this formula. The first one is called Fuzz and it is a kind of dusty pink. On the skin, as you can see, it is very, very sheer. It's the slightest bit of difference that it makes in the tone of your lips but it just brings your whole face to life. I've applied it only on the right side of my face, as you can see here, and then I cover one side and the other, just so you can see how that tiny bit of pigment completely changes the way your whole face lights up. The second color, and actually my favorite, is called Cake. I like it so much that I've even bought a backup of it. That's how crazy I am about this formula. I have never done that with anything else in my life. And this one is more of an orangey color. It's not, it's like a brownish orange nude. I've put them both on my face so that you can compare the difference between them. Again, they're more buildable than this, but my favorite way to wear them is to have it look like you have absolutely nothing on your lips. Now, something that I have noticed, first of all, the packaging on this is not the best. I dropped cake in a mall once while I was applying it, and as you can see, it just completely fell apart. It's still completely usable, but it's still such a shame that that happened. Something else that I have noticed is that perhaps because it's a cleaner formula, the formula definitely changes as time goes on. When you first get the lipstick, it is kind of a hard, waxy texture. Very little comes off onto your lips and that's my favorite way to apply it as I mentioned. As time goes on, the lipstick gets more and more creamy and more and more pigment ends up depositing on your lips. This is what has happened with Cake, which is older compared to Fuzz, which is a color that I only bought about four months ago. I don't think that that necessarily means that the formula has gone bad or that it's unsafe for use in any way. The formulation does change with time. I wish that they had more colors in this that were closer to skin tones and a little bit more grungy or grounded because I definitely buy all of them. Unfortunately, the only other color that I've ever had is Leo, which is a gorgeous cool toned brown 
but as the formula changed, it became too hard for me to wear because too much pigment would come off. So since I always reached for cake, I just decluttered it and gave it to a friend instead who was gonna get more use out of it. Another downside to note is that I think there may be some kind of fragrance in them. It's hard to explain what they smell like. It's almost a little bit floral, but not quite. It might just be ingredient smell, but it's not the most pleasant smell. Once you have it on your lips, you don't smell it anymore, but it's not very pleasant to apply for me. Even with all the downsides, with them breaking on me, with the scent not being pleasant to me, I, I can't get enough. <laughs> I, I love how they look and they're 100% my most reached for lip product. Now in terms of lip gloss, Glossier does have a very highly regarded formula, a very glassy formula that wasn't too gloopy and that just like, it was like high shine, super mirror-like, fills in all of the lines in your lips kind of lip gloss. They also have a very pretty red color that turns kind of pink on your lips and it's very stunning. I've tried it in the store and I personally prefer the Tower 28 lip glosses over them because they're a little thinner and I prefer that on my lips. The Tower 28 are also gonna fill all of your lip lines and leave that glass high impact finish. I just kind of prefer a thinner lip gloss. So there are two very comparable formulas and you kind of have to make up your mind as to what you prefer if you're in the market for a high shine gloss. Lastly, for lips, I have the Glossier Ultra Lip, which is kind of just a tinted lip balm. And as you can see, this is the exact same packaging that the Generation G comes in, except this one actually comes in a pink package instead of a white package. You can see them here compared one next to the other. Mine's in the color Trench, which is kind of like a burnt peach color. As you can see from the swatch, it is a very glossy formula, but the bullet itself is not extremely melty. It still stays stiff. Uh, it doesn't feel like it's going to break off if you press too hard. It's not a formulation like the Tarte Maracuya lips, for instance. This is a much more sturdy formula instead. Now this leave a very, very glossy finish, as you can tell, and they can be sheared out or built up, as mentioned. The colors in these don't impress me as much either. I do wish that Glossier would make some more nude tones because I'd be all over them, but I know that they want to keep things fun, so they have a lot more bright colors. I have put one of the Generation G lipsticks up against the ultra lip so that you can see just how different in formula they are. You can see that there is some kind of shine to the Generation G lipstick. It's not completely flat, but it has absolutely nothing to do with the glossy jelly-like shine that the ultra lip has, even when it's kind of spread out and blotted out. Now, formula-wise, they feel very comfy. They feel very hydrating. There's absolutely nothing wrong with these. I just don't find them spectacular. They're something that is very easy to put on. They're something that's very easy to throw into your bag and reapply. They do stay on your lips quite a long time and feel hydrating. They do everything that a tinted lip balm should do. And I do think that this color in particular is very pretty. Perhaps it's just that I'm not a lip balm kind of girl. If I want something glossy, I tend to reach for one of my lip glosses or lip oils, like something that's really high shine and makes my lips look like plump slugs. <laughs> Probably the container is just as likely to break as the Generation G lipstick because they're the exact same container. Scent-wise, these have no scent. Whatever funky little thing is going on with the Generation G lipsticks is not going on with these. I can't smell anything when I put them on. I much prefer this um, in terms of the experience of applying it than the Generation G. I just prefer the look of the Generation G and they also feel hydrating in their own way. So I tend to reach for those more. Now let's talk eyeballs. <laughs> I cannot in good conscience 
recommend a single one of their eyeshadow products. I've tried all of them in store and I don't think that they perform up to the quality that I would expect for the price that you're paying. The Lit Stars have some pretty colors, but if you're looking for high shine and high impact, which I am, they just don't cut it for me and they crease. So I, I really do not recommend them. The Sky Wash are awful. <laughs> the line of colors that they came out with made no sense with the formula. They literally are a wash of color for your eyelid. So having a very, very thin, transparent green or blue color is very, very strange and questionable in my opinion. But even the more normal colors like the browns, just didn't perform well. They were very patchy and just weren't buildable at all. So again, I would pass on those. Finally, we come to the monochrome palettes. I again swatched them in store. They have some very, very pretty colors. I like that the packaging is tin. I found that innovative and I like that about it. However, I found it very strange that there are only three eyeshadows in a pan that clearly fits four. I don't know why they made that choice. But even if we look past that, my biggest issue is that the satin and then the glimmer formula are just too, too close, right? The idea of them is that you are supposed to have three different finishes of the same color, a matte, a satin, and then a shimmer. But two of them are way too close. So already you only have three shadows and they're all the same tone, which means that you're not going to be able to build any depth. And now you're down to two shadows essentially because two of the shadows are way too close. So again, I would not recommend. I think there's better bang for your buck, even at the drugstore. So today I just randomly applied whatever I had closest. In this case, it was a Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Eye Filter Luxury Palette in Star Aura. Oh my gosh, that's a mouthful. She likes long names, doesn't she? I just wanted something kind of simple so that it wouldn't take away from the clean look. And moving on to eyelashes. I curl my lashes. I always curl my lashes because uh, I have very straight lashes. Uh, so the Lash Lick Mascara is supposed to be a tubing mascara. And as you can see, the, the brush is very typical of a tubing mascara. Now I have it in black. I believe that they also have a brown color. I would say that it's a very nice mascara if you want something that looks like you have long fluttery lashes that are wearing no mascara. <laughs> Essentially, you're gonna get some kind of definition, um, but it's not gonna hold your curl. It's gonna fall quite quickly and um, it's not gonna build any kind of volume. So it's a very, very natural looking mascara. Now, in my opinion, where this mascara shines is bottom lashes. A problem that I have with a lot of mascaras when I put them on the bottom, because I have very long bottom lashes, are that they end up smudging, right? Especially when you pair it with their concealer, which is quite emollient if you don't set it. You need to have a mascara formula that's really gonna stay put and not smudge at all. This does that. It separates the lashes and doesn't build a lot of volume, which I like on bottom lashes. It performs well for bottom lashes. I do like that. In regards to the tubing formula, it doesn't come off in perfect tubes when you're washing it off. That being said, it's not super hard to take off because you can't really build that much onto your lashes. It doesn't like to build onto itself, so it's pretty easy to wash off. Hi, editing Mickey coming at you. So I completely forgot to talk about the halo scope, the glossy halo scope. Uh, I only realized uh, while I was editing, so I'm so sorry. Let me quickly give you a rundown of how I feel about this product. So the glossy halo scope is a highlighter and it's a little bit strange because as you can see, it has like a little bit of like a clear balm in the middle of it. It is a white tube with a clear lid that gets kind of nasty, honestly. Um, I mean, I even cleaned mine up before I filmed this video, but you can see that it gets pretty nasty. Even the inside of it is going to mix up as you go along, so you're not going to see this pretty 
aesthetic circle at the end um, as you keep using it. And then a twist up from the bottom. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of product in there, which we love. In my opinion, it's wonderful for people with very dry skin. I don't like that they didn't just mix it all together. I think this might be for visual impact because it's strange that you have to kind of like mix it all together in order to apply it to yourself. Otherwise, if you just went in like this, you'd have like two streaks of highlighter and a streak of like balm across your face. I do love how it looks because it makes you look very dewy, right? It makes you look very like wet. I love a wet cheek rather than sparkly or glittery, which is what a lot of other highlighters, excuse me, what a lot of other highlighters do. I have mine in the shade Quartz. I think it's very, very gorgeous. I can apply some on myself right now since I'm not wearing any highlights so that you can see what it does. I just think it's so easy to apply and so gorgeous, but I do have to say that it never sets down. It's not super, super tacky. Let me make that clear. If I put my hairs on it, they're gonna stick to my mouth rather than my, <laughs> my highlight over there, as you can see. So it's not, it's not overly tacky, but it's definitely not ever going to set down. And I know some people get really bothered by that. I do think that for what it is, it's a little bit expensive. It will last you a really, really long time because you go through very, very little of this product every time that you use it. My favorite way to wear it is actually putting some on your cheek and also putting some right out here as a highlight. I think that's so, so pretty. I love how that looks. Uh, in my demo application, I even put some up here on my forehead and I even wear it on top of my eyebrow or in the inner corner. I do not recommend putting it on top of your eyelid because it's going to crease. I mean, it's a very wet product. It's not like it's Vaseline because it's not as gloopy as Vaseline, but it's definitely got that balmy feeling about it. Again, there's more products like this in the market. When it came out, it was quite revolutionary because everything was very glittery. This was a very wet looking cheek, which wasn't common since then. I mean, even the Tower 28 has literally just the balm. For the price, you can find similar things. If you must have it, I do enjoy it. I do use it and it will last you a very, very long time. But that's it. That's the full face. It has now been about four hours since I applied all of my makeup and you can see that it's still looking pretty good. The liquid blush has faded a little bit, but you can definitely still see quite a bit of the warmth. It just looks like I'm kind of glowing from within, I would say. My eyebrows are still holding well. My lashes have fallen a lot on the top. And my lips still have the balm on them. So like I said, it performs well. And the concealer is just looking amazing. I love this concealer. So the most important question is, will you get value from Glossier if you buy any of it now in 2023? I would say that you would get value out of the recommended Glossier products if you are somebody that likes a clean aesthetic, no drama. <laughs> Stuff that is easy to apply on the go if you don't like to use many tools or don't have good tools. And definitely a more youthful, glowy kind of complexion. Are the products still worth buying in 2023? Some of them are, but I do think that it's a bit of a shame that they didn't try to move into a big retailer like Sephora or something like a Target back in 2017 or 2018. Obviously, I'm not a business manager. I don't know what was going on with them. I'm sure that they were trying to expand as much as they possibly could. But I think that at this point, there's so much competition in clean beauty and clean aesthetic beauty that um, it's a lot harder to justify going for Glossier over something else.
But yes, that was it. This was a long, long video. I hope that it's been very helpful. Let me know if you are looking forward to getting any of these products or if you just appreciate them for their beauty as it is and they're just not for you. That's also very, very useful information to have. I hope that you have a wonderful day and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.